Hey everyone, Coops here from the whole Box and Dice Dragon Ball Super Deck Tech. We have Tournament of Power less than a month away now, and we've just cracked into the draft boxes, draft box number two. Got a couple of videos up opening that. We've cracked open a case, seeing if we can flip the uh, cost price versus what we can sell each of the cards for. So if you're interested in more of the finance stuff, check that out. Today we're going to be looking at Mirror. It's going to be green, black with the cell chain. This is a deck I've been playing for a while now. Been definitely tweaking the numbers on this. Just really looking at how this interacts with the meta. Um, before Mecha Apes was a thing, or oh, well, while Mega Apes was a thing, uh, this was still a really solid deck. And with Mecha no longer in the picture, this deck still packs a heck of a punch. The biggest issue, and I will like preface this straight off the bat, is that this deck has a very tough matchup against the um, red blue black mass saiyan list that list is just a little bit too aggressive for it. it's not impossible to win but it does take a very good understanding of both decks uh, i've had some absolute epic matches against the people that we play test but um if you were you know if you had to take only one of the decks in i think i'd probably take mask in but this is a heck of a fun deck that just feasts on a lot of the decks that still now think they can get away with big hands because cold bloodlust isn't as prevalent in the meta anymore so we'll start off with the leader, and that's going to be Mira. 10k power on the front side. When you attack, mill the top two cards into your graveyard, and then if you have a green card either in there or in your battle area, you can draw a card, which I like. The Awaken trigger for life. When you Awaken, you return a card from warp to your hand. So you don't get to refresh energy, you don't get to draw cards, or you kind of get to draw cards because you get to card select something that you've sent to warp, which is very relevant as well because you know you can send stuff away like your 10k pumps, knowing that you'll be able to get them back. On the other side, you've got the Dark Warrior Mirror. If you've got five or more cards in warp, it gains critical. Activate main once per turn. You can mill up to three cards. Just remember that is an up to, so if you do just need the one, two, or even three to get to the overall number, you have that ability, and when it attacks, it draws a card. So why we picked Mirror, why are we coupling Mirror with the Cell Chain? Well, the simple fact is that Critical, plus being an Android to run the Cell Chain, as well as getting the benefit of Overrealm, just makes for a killer, killer, killer combo. And we'll talk about some of the um, great interactions, some of the great lines that the deck runs. And we'll start off with the black cards, and then we'll go into the green stuff. Now, the biggest reason why we're running Overrealm in the deck is that you need to be able to obviously get the most use out of Mirror's ability, but we also need to make sure there's enough Overrealm to consistently see that. We have four 10k pumps because our leader is in fact a black leader. And then we've got four copies of the Relentless Destruction Mirror. This is a three drop that you can Overrealm for three. When you play it, your opponent pitches a card. And you can see straight away on the back of a cell chain, dropping down to three cards. Overrealm in Mirror, dropping down to two cards. That's a heck of a tough position for your opponent to come back from. Running four copies of Increasing Evil. This is the Mars Saiyan from the Special Packs. This is great removal because it sends the battle card to warp. So great for breaking up chains. And it also allows us to awaken if we're versing a deck that's not being very aggressive. We're also running three copies of Trunks as well. The Power Overseeing Time. Now Trunks is a great two drop that if we've been able to attack on turn one and turn two, you're able to satisfy the Overrealm 4 requirement. It just costs two. It's a 20k Love the card, bring something back from warp as well. Very relevant, like the recycle on this, and the fact that it's just a two cost 20k beta is always good. Moving into the green stuff, we're running four copies of Create Android. We love this card. It's a way to guarantee that we have a green card in the drop for Mirror when they swing in, but it's also great filtering on our deck. Same goes for Dr. Jero. The ability to look at the first couple of cards, grab something off the top, if it's an Android, there will be Androids, however, that you will want to deliberately miss on Jero. So parts of the cell chain, for example, the five drop, the seven drop, um, even the three drop as well. They're often cards you don't want to take out of your deck. Obviously, the three drop is fine because um, you're playing that one. But the other ones, unless you're going to feel the need to hard cast it or you're trying to put another 10k pump or 5k pump into your hand, do be wary of that. Got three copies of Speedy Surprise Attack. The ability to ditch a card because our leader is Mirror and get that pop on three or less is super relevant. Once again, if they're trying to set up some kind of evolution, I think you're going to be seeing a whole bunch of preface of recovery in the format. So that's a target that definitely they'll probably want to leave 
and you know well, they won't swing with that so that's a great way to pop it you can also get the value you know if they play a carver for example or they play a battle card first and then swing with your their leader you get the ability to pop their battle card and that's obviously a bad play from your opponent so you're kind of hoping they play suboptimal lines at that point but you catch a lot of people off guard with it because the deck really doesn't come across as a deck that would play too much defense because most of it is actually in our offense Running five copies of Android 17, you can really run whatever you want here in this slot, but I do like having two copies for the leaders where their hand size might already be very low. Preventing them from drawing cards sometimes is relevant with the uh, 17, plus it makes them spend some removal on it as well, which we're happy for them to do. Three copies of the critical 17, three drop is just a great card that if you need to play a beta late, having critical is very relevant, especially because you get into a lot of interactions where they'll have two or three life left, they have no cards in hand, and a 15k crit denies them a card, mirror denies them a card, then you can finish them off, and they haven't been able to draw any cards. Same for the 18s, but there's no promo, so we're going to run four copies of the crit, and one copy of the set to 18. Same principle applies. It's very rare that you actually get the ability to use the, uh, the trigger to be able to play them off each other, but occasionally you do, especially if you are using things like increasing evil or ways to remove their cards with skills or abilities. Into the cell chain, running four copies of the three drop. I'd run a fifth if we legally could. It's the great, oh, it's obviously great. You have to run it, there's no way around it. We're not running cells birth or anything. Your leader has to be cell for that. But we're pretty happy with just tucking 17 and 18 under the chain to get up to seven. Running six copies of the five drop and we're running six copies because we do actually have firstly six different or two different, which we can go up to eight copies of the five drop. What I like about it is that the standard cell has the ability to KO something and draw a card, whereas power stealing allows you to awaken as well. So we spoke about having the increasing evil Marseillans. You do mill a lot of cards in mirror just by swinging. So it certainly doesn't hurt to have some five drop cells in reserve, especially because at the end of the day, that's still a five drop, you know, 20k either double strike beta, which is still very relevant in terms of finishing off our opponent. And sometimes you will just straight hard cast one of these at the end of the game to finish your opponent off. Four copies of the seven drop. We all know how damaging this can be. As I said, the combination with mirror, dropping them down to three, dropping them then down to two. It's just so difficult for our opponent to come back from that. What I really like though with this deck is that you're often swing with your leader you swing with the five drop and then you play the seven drop over the top. That's normally the best way to do it. And if your opponent burns a whole bunch of cards to block the five drop, then you've kind of pseudo seven drop sell them anyway. And then you can make a decision whether you want to hold off playing the seven drop or maybe only get say one or two cards out of their hand. But you do have to be, you know, I guess you have to be wary. There's a lot of removal. There's a lot of overrealm or just a lot of straight up just kill stuff. And you do need to be, I guess you do need to be, yeah, considerate of that. And the fact that the card's going to be in rest mode anyway, so it can be attacked by battle or leader cards. And even if it wasn't, you do have things like Jiren floating around. So you have to be a little bit careful about how you want to manage the chain. Now, the cyborg is a very interesting one for this deck. And it's something that's constantly evolving. I think there's probably a aggro critical cyborg that you could go into. And that's kind of what you see at the moment. You've got the Kaos, you've got the Gohans. The Vegeta is absolutely nuts. If people don't understand how the Vegeta works, it's a card that when it goes through for damage, you can then choose to activate critical, meeting the conditions on the card. So it's like a all like a no risk, all reward. You either go through for damage and then you choose to activate critical, or you realize that critical is not going to happen, then you don't have to meet the requirements of the card. The Haraharus are good. We run Mirror from Darkness as well. It's a bit of a cute card, but once again, handy having the critical sideboards. So if you feel like you can't get the cell chain off effectively, then you do have, I guess, a more aggressive beta deck to go into. With Cold Bloodlust being played a lot less, right? And obviously Mecha Freezer still kind of exists, but not really. It's very hard for your opponent to play one yellow behind the whole game, um, if even if they are playing Bloodlust, no matter what kind of control shell that they're in, having that just threat of needing to always have a yellow is very relevant and at the end of the day if they bloodlust your cell you can either stop at five and just not get the seven or even if they bloodlust the seven drop you have a 30k double strike beater it's a huge body to potentially on turn three for your opponent to deal with 
and then they're going to have to then use removal to get rid of it. They're not going to have any cards left in their hand anyway, and you can definitely just set up a cell chain again. So just to recap, the deck is definitely an aggressive deck, but it also plays very smart. It looks for the times where it can guarantee the card out of its opponent's hand. It looks to maximize critical to burn it down. Now, probably a lot of you are saying, why is there no Furthering Destruction Charmper in the deck, for example? That card, I think, is just a bit too greedy in this shell. Firstly, Mirror needs to see a green card either on the battlefield or in the bin. So we're already kind of flirting that by running some black cards. I don't want to add the red into that either. Um, and at the end of the day, you can just be smart about your lines and win just off the cell and off the critical cards, the beaters that you have, you know, ripping cards away with the five drop dash, ripping cards away with mirror, refreshing your hand with mirror, refreshing your hand with trunks, getting that filtering value with create and Jiro. You don't actually need to be greedy with the double strike. You could definitely run it in the sideboard if you wanted to bring it in. But then I guess I ask you, probably without playing the deck, what are you looking to cut from this deck? You know, you either take the negates out, that leaves you a little bit too vulnerable. You go down numbers on the cell chain, you think you have room, but I would honestly run six copies of each part of the cell chain, maybe five of the seven drop, if I legally could, just because there will be games where mirror just mills you. You know, you'll swing it on your first turn and you'll mill two, three drops. And suddenly you're sitting there going, okay, now I'm 50%, right? And then that's when create becomes a lot more relevant. And that's when Jiro becomes, you know, you have to start playing around with the card selection a lot more. So the idea of adding more red cards in or even just adding red cards in in general, same for like the Goku starter combo draw. I'd love to have that utility in the deck, but you just you just don't have it. You just don't have the room for it. And I think it's, it, the word is definitely greedy. It's greedy trying to go for that. When the deck just straight up wins, it beats so many matches anyway, just because of how difficult it is to deal when you're sitting with eight cards in hand and your opponent only has two or three. So you put a lot of pressure on your opponent in terms of charging cards. You know, you see people charge 10K pumps all the time when you play them because they've just left themselves, you know, with two or three cards. They've kept a sense of being, they've kept a 10K pump and they've kept a, a beta, for example. And it's just not enough. It's not enough for them to be able to come back effectively, especially when you can cell chain them again. You know, if you get an early cell chain off and you cell chain them a second time, it's very difficult for your opponent. Ironically, the only, <laughs> I'm going to say weakness of the deck, because we already spoke about Marseille, and the one, the one hilarious thing is that if you burn your opponent's hand and they're playing Foo, you actually enable Foo, so that's kind of quite hilarious if that ever happens to you, but that's a troll anyway, so you don't have to worry, but like, just, just to like smile and nod and be like, yeah, well, I guess I made you discard 10 cards, so the fact that you can now hover on Foo really easily is probably my own fault, but apart from that, that's what the deck looks like. Definitely the, the promo foo, just speaking of foos, is another card you could look to have in the deck. You know, you could go down, for example, to three copies of Increasing, e uh, Increasing Evil and put a foo in, but you do need to have six. Um, and whilst that's not too difficult, you want to play a lot of Overrealms. You often are not, are not saving foo for that big six Overrealm turn. I feel like foo is a card that can go into pretty much any deck that doesn't have a Reliant Overrealm strategy because you always do have the graveyard to facilitate Foo off, but we just don't need it in this deck. And we're also drawing two more cards. You do get to a point where you can mill yourself in this deck. And if you haven't put enough pressure on, if you haven't set up your opponent to kill them, then that can be very risky as well. So what do you think of this one, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Have, I know there's been a few Mirror Cell decks out there. And this one, like I said, it's been been tweaked a lot. I think it's very, very relevant for the meta. You know, the mirrors, the increasing evils, the trunks, all play a key role. The sideboard gives you a kind of like an alternate strategy if you feel like your opponent's got the cell chain all worked out and countered. I'm excited to see kind of where Tournament of Power potentially can take this deck. Obviously, we're running green in the deck and there's no black. So when I what I mean by that is not new cards for this deck, but just other strategies. You know, we're seeing Khalif Laginyu, for example, pop up at the moment, which I think is a great deck, by the way. Maybe it's not super top tier competitive, but like, gee, it's fun. Uh, or if you get the 5k, 5k plus the combo card, like if you're plus 15-ing all your Ginyus, that's amazing. Like I'm, I'm all for that. But that deck also wants to have a whole bunch of cards in hand and they're not going off on turn three if you're on the play, and then all of a sudden, you know, you've stripped them down. Or if they go off on turn three, 
they're only getting two or three Ginyu mem members down, so then it's not as scary. So I think Mirror's in a great position. I will be doing a video on the Mars Saiyan deck that I think unfortunately has a 65-35 against this. That is a heck of a deck as well. If you're probably looking for something ultra competitive, Mask is 100% my recommendation at the moment. Mirror is pretty close, and you can definitely play Mirror to beat Mask, but you just need to know, you need to be aware of the fight you're getting yourself into before you commit to it. But uh, deck is not too expensive either. I know Cell's kind of jumped up a little bit in price, but overall, um, you know, overall price-wise, deck's not too expensive. And in saying that, the Mask deck isn't that expensive either. It runs a whole bunch of commons and uncommons, and it just runs trunks from the, the starter deck. So not cards that are too difficult to get a hold of, but, um, you know, good. It's, it's, uh, it's a very good deck, you know, and I, I like both these decks, and I look forward to hearing your thoughts on them. You know, if you played something similar like this, do you like the look of this? If you do play the deck, let me know how you went with it. Hopefully you can get you some sweet 4-0s in your locals and pick up those play mats and get some extra boost packs and some of those sweet tournament 3-pack promos. But, uh... I've been cooped, you know the drill, this is the whole box and dice, check us out on all the socials if you want to stay up to date with the channel, got a whole bunch of giveaways going on, we've got the explosive SPR Kid Goku video, the winner goes up tomorrow, we've got a playset of the Preference of Recovery, BCC Gokus that we're go um, going on at the moment, you can check us out on Patreon if you want to support the channel, share the video if you want to get your mates involved, subscribe if you are new, just like, it's like a reel at the end now. I should just like have this pre-recorded and just hit play and go through all this stuff. But uh, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Glad to be back doing some DBS content. Peace.